Welcome to lecture 20. In this lecture, we will be showing you how we can interface with STM32F401 board. So, specifically in this lecture, I will be showing you three example, three example program in which I will be using the onboard LED and the onboard switch and I will also connect an external switch to show the input output usage of various pins. Let us move on. Okay. So, we will be basically showing you three programs as I said one will be the workout example for blinking LED. The next one is an example through which we an user input and depending on the user input a few things will happen and another one is through user input button okay so let us move on so the three example programs shall be demonstrated on this stm uh, 32f401 development board so i wanted to show you the board okay so this is the board and you can see this is the onboard LED, this is one. There is one more onboard LED, these are the user button and the recent button of this board and this is also a red and green LED. When we dump the program, this LED will be glowing. Okay? And these are the input output digital pins which can be configured both as an input pin or as an output pin. Okay. Okay. So, so the three example programs shall be demonstrated using the board I have just shown you. And here we do not interface any external device. As I have told you, only the external device will be the switch that I will be connecting. Other than that, we are not interfacing any other device. And we use the I.O. facilities available on board like the switches and the, the switches and the LED and a simple external input. That is all we will be showing. So, the three example goes like this, the onboard LED will be blinked, it will blink for certain duration and it will be off for certain duration. Okay, this is the first one. The next one is depending on the user input on the port line, an LED will glow. Let us say the LED will be glowing and when I press the switch it will be off or the other way around. The LED will be off. And when I press the switch, the LED will be on. We can do either of these two. And we also use this onboard switch to turn on and off the LED. Okay. Let us move on. This is the first program. Now let us see how this program actually works. The first one is include embed.h which is mandatory for any program. This is the header file. You recall what we used to do in C programming when we write. We include certain header files stdio.h generally the standard input output. Same way as we are using an online compiler embed compiler you need to use this embed.h header file. You need to include that in your code. The next one is digital out. So, we are making the onboard LED, the third one, LED 3 is the one we will be showing you. Uh, we are making that LED as digital out port and we are writing with the name my LED. 
my LED is the name of the LED, LED 3 which is on board. Okay. This is the meaning of digital out my LED, LED 3. There are many other ports as well. You can make that as digital out let us say uh, my LED 1 to D 0, my LED 2 to D 1 and so on. Okay. Then we start with the main. The main function is the one from where the execution starts, we all know that. So, here in the main there is a while loop, you see in an embedded application what generally is done as I have told you an example of a smoke detector. So, it will read certain input and depending on that input it will perform something and that will go on happening. So, that reading process etc. will go on happen right. So, that is why I want this entire set of things to happen okay, all the time that is why it is while 1. So, while 1 my LED which is nothing but this LED 3 the name given is my LED equals to 1 meaning the LED will be on when we are making it 1 meaning the LED will be 1 and I wait for 0 0.2 seconds that is uh, 200 millisecond. Then again I make my LED off making by making it 0 and again I wait for 0 0.1 second that is 100 millisecond and this is repeated for a, in an infinite loop. Okay. So, these are the set of codes that are used to connect this LED 3 on board LED 3 using this object my LED and I am making it on for certain period and I am making it off for certain period and this is going forever. Okay. Now, I will be showing you this particular code in the board. You can see I have already connected through this USB, this is the USB port that I have already connected to my PC and now what I will do basically, so now I will use the online embed compiler where I will be dumping the same code, the same code just now which I have shown you. Okay. So, what I am doing here? I am compiling the code, the code I have already written, the same code just now which I have discussed with you and I am extracting it, I am saving it in the download folder, I open the download folder, I take it, I copy it which is pasted on this particular board, I paste this. Okay. Now, you see after pasting what is happening? This is the LED 3 which is actually blinking. You can see that that this particular LED which is LED 3 is blinking. Now, what I will do? I will just change the delay. Okay. You concentrate looking here and I will just change the delay of this particular thing let us say oh, the LED will glow for 2 seconds and the LED will be off for 1 second let us say and I again recompile the code. I am recompiling the code, I save it and then I copy it to the nuclear board, I dump the code into this board. Now, you see the LED is glowing for 2 seconds and off for 1, it is glowing for 2 seconds again off for 1. So, that blinking speed has changed. Okay. So, you can do variety of example using this board, this is a sample example I have shown how do you use the on board LED, this is the on board LED. Okay that is blinking for it is on for it, which is on for let us say 2 second and off for 1. Again you see it is on for roughly 2 second 
and off for one second. Okay. Okay, so coming back to the program, this was the program and you can change it accordingly to move on. Okay, this is one of the error that you might get when you do it for the fir first time. Okay, you can see this error, the error is like cannot open source input file embed.h. Then what you need to do is that you need to click on fix it. You will be seeing this button in the down corner in the button on the error line. You click on that fix it and you will get a list of libraries to choose from. Okay. And in that case you have to select the first one which is embed the official C C++ SDK. So, this you must remember that once you are you are doing it for the first time you might get all these errors. Like I told you in the previous uh, slide regarding in, in the previous lecture regarding uh, you have to install a particular uh, driver for it driver STM driver and then you have to check whether the driver is installed properly or not. In the same way in this case you have to do this particular thing like you will get this error if you get this error please do the needful select this embed the official C C++ SDK and click on OK button and again you compile it and you will see that there will not be any more library errors. Okay. Now, how do you upload the program? This I have probably already shown you uh, how you have to do this. On compiling the binary file, this will get downloaded uh, to the computer. Then we need to connect this STM Nucleo to your computer or laptop okay, and uh, via this USB cable and all the LEDs turn on the user LED will start blinking because this user LED that is LED 3 is the user LED which will blink for certain period and it will be off for certain period. Uh, this is the program and now you go to my computer nucleo drive and paste the bin file into this drive which I have already shown you. As soon as you paste that file you will see that the power LED starts blinking. I will show you for the next program. If you have not noticed it then I will be showing you for the next program and with two colors. This indicates basically that the program is burned into the flash memory. Okay? The program that we have written we have compiled, we have downloaded it, now we are putting it into this uh, device. Okay? That is shown with that red and uh, green LED. And after the program is burned, the user LED will blink with the given rate that is there. Now I will move on uh, with example 2, testing for IO pin configuration. In this experiment, uh, we try to provide a digital input to the microcontroller. Now, how do we provide this digital input to the microcontroller? We will be using a switch, a matrix switch where we will be using one individual point, one individual switch of that one and check the response by blinking again the same LED 3 which is present on board. We are not using any external LED now. So, we will need a single, uh, you can also do using this where a single strand of small wire and you connect with 5 volt supply and ground with the board and we will use this power out port of the board to take the digital input. This also you can do, but alternatively we have used this uh, switch, matrix switch where I will take one individual switch to uh, make that input to one of the uh, input port of that board. Okay. So, now how the program it will be? Here as I told you I am making one of the 
input output port as input port. So, we have to do digital in the object is my input. So, you have to use my input in your program and which port the D2 port is made the digital input port okay, of the uh, board and digital output will be the same LED 3 on board LED. What this code is actually doing this is main this is while 1 if my input that means if this is 1 basically my LED will be 1. We need to check what it is receiving initially if it is receiving 1 then the LED will glow else when the switch is pressed then it will receive this my input will receive 0 then my LED I will make it off. But now earlier I have put up a program which was continuously doing the same thing, but now I am doing based on the switch input. Okay. If the switch input we have not pressed the switch then it will the LED will glow, if we have pressed the switch the LED will not glow. Okay. Now we will see uh, how the code works. this is my switch basically this is my switch let me tell you what I have done if you see this is C1 this is R1 ok so this is row 1 this is column 1 ok this is row 1 this whole one is the row 1 and this is column 1. Similarly, this is row 2, this is column 2 and so on. I am using row 1 column 1 means this particular switch, the first one. The first one I am using as a input switch. Okay. So, what I have essentially done in this particular code, in this particular connection, first let us understand. One port, so this is one is my BCC which is connected to the port BCC 1, 2, 3 and 4 and this is the ground which is connected to port ground. Okay. And now you see one thing how this connection goes, one end of the switch is connected through resistance to BCC, this is the BCC, another end of the port is connected to another end of the port is connected to ground you see this is the ground this particular line if you see this one is the ground and minus and this one plus is the BCC ok and from this common point I am taking input. So, this BCC point has come here and the ground has come here and one for part of one point of the switch I am directly connecting to ground another part of the switch I am connecting through BCC using this resistance ok. And from where I will be taking the input you see I will be taking the input from this particular point this particular point ok. So, from here I take the input to port D2 ok. So, what value it will receive initially it will receive close to 5 volt ok. So, after getting the resistance with the voltage drop etcetera. So, this is all about the connection there is nothing else that we are doing. Now, we will be using this uh, instead of the user button of the board board for instead of these buttons we will be using this particular switch ok instead of these user switch ok we will be using this switch. Let me first dump the program. This is input usage. So, this is my code, the code just now which I have discussed with you. I will compile it. I will compile it, I have downloaded it, 
and I will paste it. But while pasting it, I will show you this board again because then you can see that this particular LED will 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 be blinking if you can see that. Okay. So let me try to show you. I'll I'll now copy. I'll cut here and I will show you here. Can you see that? It's it was glowing. Okay. Now, as you know that this switch is now getting one value because from where this input is going from this point the input is going to D2. Okay. From this point the input is going to this D2. Okay. So, it is receiving 5 volt that is why this onboard LED if you can see it is glowing this is the onboard LED it is glowing. But now I will press the switch you see when you press the switch it is not glowing what value it is receiving now it is receiving a zero value again I release it you see the LED start glowing okay again I off it I click it that means it is getting a value zero it is off again I release it you can see it is again glowing. So, using this particular button I am making this LED on and off fine. So, this is this particular program which I have already shown you. Now, let me move on this typical usage of uh, digital I O. So, this digital I O can be used for interfacing external devices some of which we will be uh, will also see in this course uh, of the lectures and the demonstration and uh, this is basically switching based on activity. So, like something like interrupt will be looking into or controlling an electromechanical device okay even for taking sensor input if i press the button then only it will take you can also try out doing various other things communicating other similar or dissimilar devices and there could be many more usage of this io pin okay the last example is testing the user button we have also seen that uh, there is a onboard uh, user button in this particular board. So, here we will be using that user button um, available on board to control a digital out to the user LED on board. So, uh, same thing, but now based on this user button, I will make changes to this on board LED. Okay. Of course, uh, please uh, there is something you must note that uh, the stacked switch the switch which is on board by default sends out a VCC signal. So, uh, when it is uh, not pressed it will send out a one signal and when pressed it sends out a ground signal that is logic 0. So, this particular thing we have already seen the in the previous example with the switch I have already shown you and this will be showing the same aspect, but with the onboard switch. Okay. Now, let us first see the program. This is the digital in. Now, I am digital in making that user button. This is the onboard user button okay. and the name which I am giving for using in my program is my button and digital out is the same LED on board LED which I have given the name out in this case. Let me see what we are doing it. If not my button, what I said when the button is pressed it will send a 0, but when the button is not pressed it will send out a 1. If not my button that means if 0 that means the button is pressed then out will be 1 else if the button is not pressed out will be 0 okay, and return 0. Okay. So, this is a simple code where instead of that, um, uh, that uh, other button we are using the onboard button that is the user button and the code goes like this if not my button that means if this is 0 then out 
which is the onboard LED will be 1 that means it will glow ok else it will not glow ok. So, I will show you now the code for it. Let me this is the user button. So I will just I will just dump the code which I have just discussed. I will just copy it and we will paste it and now you can see that it will start glowing yeah that LED ok. Ok. Now this is the user button the LED is not glowing, but when it is pressed it is glowing because in the code it was if not my button then it will glow I release it you can see it is not glowing. This is the LED I am talking about when it is pressed it is glowing, I release this it is not glowing, again I press it is glowing, again I release it is not glowing ok. So, this is the one I am showing with this particular onboard LED, the simple code that I have just shown you is there ok. So, So, these are the few experiments uh, that I have shown you uh, in this particular lecture where I have shown you three codes basically one for blinking the LED, one for how will you provide uh, user input through some switches here I have used one of the matrix switch and how you can use the onboard uh, switch these are the three programs that I have shown thank you.